Since the James Webb Space Telescope was launched, we've been presented with captivating views of the universe that are unprecedented. It has even provided a fresh perspective on the celestial bodies within our solar system. We even saw clouds on Saturn's moon Titan. Although they are made up of methane, but still cool nonetheless. And we have discovered possible signs of life on an exoplanet only 124 light years from Earth. Yes, I mention the distance as merely 124 light years because we're discussing this on a cosmic time scale. Scientists anticipate that discovering extraterrestrial life is just a matter of time. Before delving into that, let's explore how the cosmic time machine is causing considerable concern within the scientific community. You've likely heard about the ancient galaxies the telescope uncovered, challenging our cosmological expectations. These galaxies are so ancient that they seem to have originated a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, challenging the notion that the Dark Ages were truly dark. And apparently, the telescope has found more galaxy candidates that could be older than the oldest galaxy, which for now is Macy's galaxy. So, we don't know what the telescope is going to find next, but recently it took an image that just made the greatest puzzle in cosmology even more puzzling. Yes, new James Webb images suggest our understanding of the cosmos is flawed, and if the result is correct, we might need new physics to explain the universe. And this is the image that did it. You are looking at pulsating stars that reveal the motion of this spiral galaxy, 75 million light years away, called NGC 5584, that suggests the universe is expanding faster than astronomers' leading theory of the universe says it should. The observation is in conflict with an esteemed theory, the standard model of cosmology that describes how the universe has evolved since the first moments after the Big Bang. So how exactly is the image creating a stir in our science? The rate at which the universe is expanding, known as the Hubble constant, is one of the fundamental parameters for understanding the evolution and ultimate fate of the cosmos. Imagine the universe is like a big balloon that's getting bitter over time. The Hubble constant is like a special number that tells us how fast the balloon is inflating. Now, scientists have been trying to measure this number using various methods, and the main ways of doing that are one, distance indicators. Imagine you're trying to figure out how fast a car is moving, but it's too far away to see its speedometer. Instead, you look at how quickly it's getting closer to you. Similarly, scientists look at objects in space, like certain types of exploding stars called supernovae, or supermassive stars way bigger than our sun. These are like cosmic pinpoints in space, and they tell us how fast they're moving away from us, thereby indicating the expansion rate of the universe. Two, cosmic afterglow. Another way is to look back in time to the very beginning of the universe, like rewinding a movie. Scientists can study the afterglow of the Big Bang, which is like the echo of the universe's birth. By examining this afterglow, they can calculate the Hubble constant based on the early conditions of the universe. The problem is, when scientists use these two methods separately, they get different results for the Hubble constant. This is called the Hubble tension, and scientists are trying to figure out why these methods don't agree. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope provides new capabilities to scrutinize and refine some of the strongest observational evidence for this tension. So scientists turn the telescope to look at special stars called sea feed variables in space. These stars are like really bright beacons in space, but there's a catch when scientists use ground base telescopes or even the Hubble Space Telescope to look at these stars. Sometimes they see other stars next to them, like when you try to read a sign, but it's blurry because there are other things around it. With Webb's extraordinary infrared capabilities, it can peer through cosmic dust and help scientists see the sea feed stars much better and not get confused by the other stars nearby. 
Webb's observation revealed that the earlier Hubble Space Telescope measurements were accurate, although noisier. This means that both telescopes agree on the information they found about the Hubble constant. But here's the tricky part. The universe seems to be expanding much faster than what scientists expected based on its baby picture, aka the cosmic microwave background. Hence the problem of a Hubble tension still remains. And this brings us to a very important question. What are we missing here? To find the answer, we need to go back in time. Not long after the James Webb Space Telescope began beaming back its images of planets and nebulae from the depths of outer space last year, astronomers, though dazzled by the spectacle, were forced to confront an uncomfortable reality. Something didn't quite fit with their existing understanding of the cosmos. Cut to the present, and we have several months of data received by the telescope that points towards an awkward projection the need to rethink some of the fundamental tenets governing our comprehension of the universe's origin and evolution. The standard model, which is the bedrock of essentially all research in the field, dictates that there is a fixed and precise sequence of events that followed the Big Bang. First, the force of gravity pulled together denser regions in the cooling cosmic gas, which grew to become stars and black holes. Then, the force of gravity pulled together the stars into galaxies. Yet the data relayed by Webb introduced a jarring twist in this cosmic narrative. It unveiled the existence of exceptionally large galaxies that seemed to form with astonishing speed, defying the timelines prescribed by the standard model. This finding wasn't a minor discrepancy, and to make matters worse, the conundrum surrounding the Hubble tension remained unsolved. At first, scientists hoped that these discrepancies would be resolved as data got more accurate with more observations. But not only has that not happened, the discrepancies have gotten far more precise, and the recent data from Webb has added salt to the wound. This trend suggests a flaw in the model, not in the data. What compounds this unease is the awareness that over the past half century, the cosmic model has been patched and amended repeatedly to align more closely with the latest data. While these revisions may have been essential and scientifically sound, in light of the current challenges, they appear as a series of conveniently tailored adjustments. Physicists and astronomers are starting to get the sense that something may be really wrong. The standard model of cosmology, which stands as a testament to human intellectual achievement, has its genesis that can be traced back to Edwin Hubble's groundbreaking discovery in the 1920s, the universe's expansion. That's right, in 1929, Edwin Hubble provided the first observational evidence for the universe having a finite age. Using the largest telescope of the time, he discovered that the more distant a galaxy is from us, the faster it appears to be receding into space. However, there is nothing inherently fishy about these features of the standard model. Scientists often discover good, indirect evidence for things that we cannot see, such as the hyperdense singularities inside a black hole. But in the wake of Webb's confounding data about galaxy formation and the worsening problem with the Hubble constant, you can't be blamed for starting to wonder if the model is out of joint. And it might be time for us to take a radical departure from the standard model, one that may even require us to change how we think of the elemental components of the universe, possibly even the nature of space and time. Any scientific revolution of the sort we're imagining would presumably have comparable reverberations in our understanding of ourselves. For now, we wait and watch what the James Webb Telescope does next. What do you think? Does the Big Bang need a revision? Or is it time to develop a new model altogether? Let me know by dropping in your comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. And also, we now have channel memberships live.